Vegas and the Democratic presidential debate to kick off our next round of questioning. Here's Hallie. Mayor Buttigieg, to you, in 2018, Mayor Bloomberg was the biggest outside spender helping Democrats running for Congress. He's also donated billions towards causes like climate change, gun safety, education. If his money wasn't a problem then, why is it a problem now? Oh, I think he should absolutely be doing everything in his power to defeat Donald Trump. I just don't think that has to result in him becoming the president of the United States. Look, our party has values. We were built around values like uh, making sure we protect working people. But Mayor Bloomberg opposed raising the minimum wage. Uh, our party has a tradition that includes excellent presidents like Barack Obama, who Mayor Bloomberg opposed. At the end of the day, it's not just about how much money you've got. It's what you stand for. And we are living at a moment when Americans are so deeply frustrated with the way that both Wall Street and Washington seem to have overlooked our lives. You know, the, the view from the porch of my one house in Indiana <laughs> is that they can't even see us sometimes. And if we're going into the election of our lives against a president who rose to power by cynically exploiting the frustration of ordinary Americans feeling like leaders weren't speaking to them, then I think that turning to someone like Mayor Bloomberg, who thinks he can buy this election, is no better a way to succeed than turning to somebody like Senator Sanders, who wants to burn the House down. Mr. Vice President. You know, if you excuse the point of personal privilege, used to say, it was said that I was in the pocket of Mitch McConnell. I'm the only person on this stage that's beaten Mitch McConnell on four major, major cases. Let, let, let me finish. Let me, let me finish. And Mitch McConnell, I've been the object of his affection and the president's affection. The way he's gone after me, this new Republican Party, after me, after my son, after my family. I don't need to be told I'm a friend of Mitch McConnell's. Mitch McConnell has been the biggest pain in my neck in a long, long time. And so that's number one. Number two, we have to have somebody who understands what it's like for ordinary people. Ordinary people come up. They have to understand, like my dad made that longest walk up a short foot of stairs, said, I don't have a job, honey. We have to move. You got to move with grandpa. How long it took to buy a house. How long it took to get back in the game again. They have to understand the needs of ordinary people. And they are getting killed no matter what people say about this, this, this economy, how good it is. And the good part of the economy, this is only 60 seconds, not up yet. And the fact is that we are in a situation where you have mayor, the, the, excuse me, the president making clear that he doesn't want any part of me being his his opponent. He's spending $125,000 this week to keep me from being an opponent. I wonder why. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. So, Vanessa, can I respond to the Vice President's Thank you, Holly. Please, he was identifying me specifically in this. 45 seconds, seconds to you. Yeah, responding so, to an accusation. So, no, the point is different. Here's what happened. According to the New York Times, the last time that Mitch McConnell was on the ballot, the Vice President stood in the Oval Office and said, I hope that Mitch gets reelected so I can keep working with him. Well, Mitch That's did get totally out of Mitch did get reelected. He did not have an epiphany. Instead, he blocked nearly everything that Barack Obama tried to pass. Did you ever and win he stole Senate? a Supreme Court seat Come on. from Thank the you. Democrats, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Thank you, Senator. Yeah. Thank you, Senator. Our next question goes to Senator Klobuchar. About 700,000 young people known as dreamers or soñadores who were brought to this country as children are currently protected from deportation because of a program that is now under the review by the Supreme Court. If the court sides with the Trump administration, which is eager to end this protection, what exactly is your plan to protect the dreamers permanently? To win to beat Donald Trump. Uh, the best way to protect the dreamers is to have a new president. Uh, there are the votes there to protect the dreamers. And I have been working on this uh, since I got to the United States Senate. Uh, in my first campaign, I actually had a bunch of ads run against me because I was standing up for immigrants. And when I think of dreamers, and I try to explain it to my state, I found a 99-year-old Hispanic war veteran uh, who was a dreamer when he was brought over to this country. And back then, he just went to Canada for a night and came back, and he was a permanent 
citizen because they needed him to serve in World War II. Now, not so easy. The dreamers are our future. The dreamers are so important in Nevada. And the best way we can get this done is to beat Donald Trump, but it is to pass comprehensive immigration reform, which Thank creates you. a path to citizenship to so many hardworking people, will bring down the deficit by $158 billion, and will bring peace for these dreamers. Thank we you know so much. No other Senator country Senator. but our own. If Thank you. Thank you. Your, if you're going to run based on your record of voting in Washington, then you have to own those votes, especially when it comes to immigration. You voted to confirm the head of Customs and Border Protection under Trump, who was one of the architects of the family separation policy. You voted to make English the national language. Do you know the message that sends in as multilingual a state as Nevada to immigrants? You have been unusual among Democrats, I think the Democrat among all of the senators running for president, most likely to vote for Donald Trump's judges, who we know are especially hostile to dreamers and to the rights of immigrants. Now, in South Bend, it was not always easy to stand up in a conservative place like Indiana on immigration, but we delivered. We created a municipal ID program so that dreamers and others who were undocumented were able to navigate everyday life. We stood up for those rights and stood with members of our community with the message that they were as American as we are. A, a los soñadores hay que decir que you know, este país es tu país también. Gracias. Everyone gracias. was gracias. as gracias. perfect. I wish everyone is, was as perfect as you, Pete, but let me tell you what it's like to be in the arena. And number one, do the math. If my friend Andrew Yang was up here, that's what he'd say. In fact, I have opposed uh, and not supported two-thirds of the Trump judges, so get your numbers right. And I am in the top 10 to 15 of opposing them. Number two, when it becomes comes to immigration reform, the things that you are referring to, that official that you are referring to was supported by about half the Democrats, including uh, someone in this room. And I will say this, he was highly recommended by the Obama officials. You know why? Because Trump had so few career people. I did not one bit agree with these draconian policies to separate kids from their parents. And in my first 100 days, I would immediately change that. And I would add one more thing. I have been in the arena. You, Ted Kennedy, he had made a pretty big allegation against me again, and I think I should have a right to respond. I'm stating he the facts had, because these are votes that you Ted took, Kennedy, and those votes set you alone among the Democrats running for president. No other Dem is it true or is it false that no other Democrat all, from the Senate running for president voted that First of all, what you said about the judges way. are false. You are comparing me to two colleagues up here on this stage, and you are forgetting well, one thing. I would say anybody who ran oh. for president this cycle, Senator no, Harris, he, Senator Booker, saw through this. If you could let me this. finish since I've been in the arena, Ted Kennedy asked me to work on the first immigration bill. We were able, with President Bush, to at least get that bill to a vote. I'm sorry, but Senator Sanders actually opposed that bill, and I worked on it. And if we had gotten that bill done, there would have been a path to citizenship for so many people. Then I worked on the 2013 bill. I'm actually so right. proud of the work I've done on immigration reform. And you know what? You have not been in the arena doing that work. You've memorized a bunch of talking points and a bunch of things, but I can tell you one thing. What the people of this country want, they want a leader that has the heart for the immigrants of this country, and that is me. You know, maybe so leading a diverse city that was facing ruin doesn't sound like the arena to you. I'm used to senators telling mayors that senators are more important than mayors, but this is the arena too. You don't have to be in Washington to matter. You don't have to be on Capitol okay. Hill can, can for your world well, to be we significant. Are, guys, guys, the arena we, are at the end, we are at the end here. We are at the end here. I gotta let that one go. We are, we are, not, we are less than two weeks away from a national primary. And I wanna ask all of you this simple question. There's a very good chance none of you are gonna have enough delegates to the Democratic National Convention to clinch this nomination, okay? If that happens, I want all of your opinions on this. Should the person with the most delegates at the end of this primary season be the nominee, even if they are short of a majority? Senator Sanders, I'm gonna let you go last here because I know your view on this. <laughs> so instead, I will start with you, Mayor Bloomberg. Whatever the rules of the Democratic Party are, they should be followed. And if they have a process, which I believe okay. they do, I'm trying to do so this that everybody else, everybody can, can. So you can, want the convention to work its will? Yes. 
Senator Warren. But a convention working its will means that people have the delegates that are pledged to them, and they keep those delegates until so the leading you come person? to the convention. No. All okay. of the people. All righty. Vice President Biden? Played by the rules. Yes or no? Leading person with the delegates, should they be the nominee or not? No. Let the process work its way out. Mayor Buttigieg? Not necessarily. Not to lose the Senator majority. Klobuchar? Let the process work. Senator Sanders? Well, the process includes 500 super delegates on the second ballot. So I think that right. the will of the people should okay. prevail. Yes. Uh, First thank you, guys. Most votes should become the nominee. Five no's and a yes. We are not done yet. We're back with more from Las Vegas after a short break.